Welcome back to Meet the Candidates. Our guest with me at this time is Fifth Ward Council candidate, Joe Scapani. Joe, welcome. Thank you for having me, Candace. How are you? I am doing wonderfully. How are you today? I'm doing great. Good, good, good. Well, we appreciate you taking the time to uh, let the residents get to know a little something about you and your problem. Well, all right, let's 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 just get right into this because, um, you know, we have some people in the race where their names are a little bit known. People know a little bit more about them. Uh, let's get to know a little bit more about you. Why don't you introduce yourself to the audience and tell us a little bit about yourself? All right. Uh, well, a lot of people know me from the Mural Project. Um, I'm the director of Flint Public Art Project, um, the organization responsible for putting up all the murals around Flint. I also am working with the Flint Leverage Point Project, which is a food and research or research uh, study on the food system in Flint uh, with MSU and the Community Foundation. I live in Carriagetown. I've been here for about 15 years with my partner, and I love the city of Flint. All right. Well, I think that um, it's safe to say at this point, America loves Flint. You know, we hear so much about us, Flint this, Flint that, both good and bad, right? Um, oh, yeah. Those of us who live here, you know, we know the real. So tell us, what are the three greatest strengths of the city of Flint? The people is number one. The people in this community, I've worked with people all throughout this community, all throughout the city, and they are the driving backbone of the city. They are such hard workers. I see so many people that are, they spend, they put so much into this to make this a great livable place. And I always joke around one of the best things about Flint is it's like all the benefits of a big city mm -hmm. uh, with that small town feel where a lot of people know, you know, you pretty much know almost everybody. And it just, really, I don't know, it almost feels like a Hallmark movie in that <laughs> aspect. <laughs> um, some other great benefits of Lent are the food. We have a lot of great restaurants around here. Um, yeah, the people are always the best, but I keep saying that. Um, there's just a lot of fun things to do here. I mean, the, of course, I've got to say the art. Uh, public art that the murals are amazing I think of course um, that's tooting my own horn but you know they're, they're just one of the many things uh, Flint River um, kayaking uh, kayaking there's a cultural center I mean, there's just so much stuff to do here it's very just a fun place to be well you've certainly described Flint beautifully uh from the art to the cuisine down to the people, which is what this is really about today, the people. And I'm, I'm just wondering, why is serving on city council important to you? Well, a couple of reasons. One of them, I, you know, we got to start addressing the budget shortfalls, uh, uh, you know, the revenue shortfalls of the budget. And I think I'm a pretty good candidate to do that. I do have, uh, master's in public administration, and I am finishing up a master's in accounting. Um, so I do know a lot about policies, policies that need to be placed so we can have change and get generate some new revenue. And I also know about budget and finance. So I have a lot of great ideas of how to bring and generate some new revenue for the city. And I think it would be a great thing if we could start filling some of these budget shortfalls here and make the city a lot more fun than it is. You know, there's so many opportunities here. Flint is, I don't know, it's, it's almost like one of those places you can just almost do, you know, people are so great that you can almost do so much in here. Mm -hmm. And it's just never seems like it's enough anyway. So, because it's always fun and rewarding to do. Right. And I just want to make sure that stays. Absolutely. It's like Paul Hearing always says that Flint is a good place to make better. Um, yeah. I'm just wondering if you can make one change or improvement to the city overall, 
what would that change or improvement be? In the community, I would say, God, one. I was not looking at a lot of this. I mean, there's so many, you know, there's blight, crime, all this other stuff. But I think if we started focusing on some of the blight, we could really help with some of the crime because a lot of that goes hand in hand. So I mean, I think a lot of our problems end up going hand in hand. And I think the biggest thing I want to work at is filling the budget shortle. You know, the the shortles in the budget. I mean. Let's get some new revenue generated in the city so we can turn things around and just keep improving. All right. Now, you've answered what's important, you know, what's the one thing that's important overall for the city. Let's talk specifically for the fifth ward. What are two concerns that you have in your ward and how would you work to address them? <laughs> so... One of the one of the concerns I have in the fifth ward is protecting the historic district. I live in the historic, you know, historic neighborhoods and the historic homes. I live in the historic district. I'm on the historic district commission, um, and historic properties are a big asset to us. And I want to ensure that ensure that we're still going to keep that historic status in the city, and keep protecting these assets in our neighborhood. I don't want to, we see so many places get bulldozed and new construction come up. And I just don't want to see this part of the history. And there's a, not just carriage town, but other parts of the city. Um, I don't want to see those go away. So, I mean, that would be one thing I want to make sure we protect. Um, the roads, the roads here are terrible. We got to figure out a plan to fix up fix up these roads. So, those would probably be the two things I'd really like to get done for this area. All right. Well, well speaking of city business and getting things done, um, we are all, as well as all of America, uh, we're well aware that uh, being on the Flint City Council is not for the faint of heart. In the past, council members have disagreed, and it has cost a lot of valuable time that could have been. Uh, spent handling city business, if elected, how would you work with the other council members to avoid this? I think a lot of it is we have to hear people out. So, I mean, instead of bickering back and forth and stopping everybody from talking, let the person speak and let's solve the issue and move on instead of everybody trying to go over each other, you know, go over each other. But one of the big things is we got to stop having this team and this team or that, you know, we, we should work together. All nine council members should work together for the best of the city. And that's what we should, we should concentrate on doing. So I've done, I've, I've had, I've worked on a lot of community workshops. I've done a lot of, community uh, groups and working with the arts, trying to make things, trying to put up when we're putting up these murals to make sure they go up right. Majority of them have been a success, some have been a failure, but you know, we've worked through some of every issue and that's what we have to do is we have to work through the issues and not fight about it. And it sounds like in your experience with the workshops and getting murals done and doing things that you do in the community, you may or may not have run across some conversations uh, and working with the people that where they've had some difficulty in reaching their council person in the past. Uh, if you are elected, how would you make sure that you are readily available for residents when needed and that you know requests do not go unanswered? I, I always answer my phone. I'm one of those weird people that always answer my phone. If you call me, um, I know everybody in my neighborhood knows they're well. They always, they stop, a lot of people stop by or, you know, they're not afraid to reach out, call me, um, call me anytime, day or night. I will answer out. If I'm, if I'm not available, I'll call you right back. Um, I think a lot of people know me for that. So, and I'll continue to do the same thing. And so um, we've come to the point in our show 
where it's time, Joe, to ask you the real questions. All right. If you had a million dollars, what would you do with it? I had a million dollars, what would I do with it? Um, I think <clears throat> I would give money to the Community Foundation Neighborhood Small Grants. That would be one of my top priorities. Um, so much good comes out of that grant fund that really benefits the whole city. And really, it really does a lot of transformation for the city and a lot of things that people are doing in the, in the community and helps, I don't know, inspire their hopes and dreams of what their neighborhood should and could be. And they're able to see those hopes and dreams come to life with uh, the neighborhood small grants. And if I had, a, if someone gave me a million dollars that I could do whatever I want with, I think it would be to donate it to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those are all admirable things. If I had a million dollars, I definitely would do some things to help the city of Flint. But say you had just enough left for towards something of your dream, what would that be? What would you spend it on? You know, I have everything I dreamed of. <laughs> I have a great relationship. I have a beautiful house. I have wonderful dogs. I have two great, wonderful kids, four great, four wonderful grandkids. Um, I've traveled a lot. I have a lot of good friends. I, I, at 50 years old, I can't think of what I would have, what I would desperately want and need. <laughs> So you've traveled a lot. If you could teleport, where would you teleport back to? In time? Anywhere. Mm. I, if I could teleport right now, I'd probably uh, teleport for a nice long weekend to uh, Manchester, uh, either Manchester or Argentina to visit some friends mm. for right now that I haven't seen in over a year. All right, and one more really, really important question. Because you are a Michigan man, what is your favorite Fago pop? My favorite what? Fago pop. What's your favorite? Rock and rye. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I always should have hesitated, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, you're more than fine, Joe. Thank you for just entertaining those questions. We like to give people a well-rounded view of the candidates, so we appreciate you taking the time to have a little fun with us. No problem. Uh, let's get back into some of the pressing questions that residents want to know. Where do you right. see your ward in the next five years under your leadership? Well, in the next few years under your leadership. I see it succeeding and, and growing and becoming more sustainable, having more livable, walkable, uh, better road, better walkability, um, more entertaining than it already is. <laughs> And just recently it was announced that $99 million of relief was coming the city of Flint's way. If yes. it were up to you, how would that money be spent? What areas would it be spent in? If I could spend it on anything, if someone said, Joe, you get to choose, you got $99 million, or $99 million you can choose anything to spend it on um, to help better the city. I think I would look at the crime, look at helping police and fire, I would, I would look at addressing blight, and I would look at addressing the roads. What specifically, because public safety is a huge issue in our community. Um, and so one of the things that the council does is approve the budget for public safety. If elected, would you be open to increasing that budget? And if it, if it looks like it was leaning in the direction of not happening, how would you work to get that done? I'm sorry, what? I, I didn't hear you cut out there for a second. Which, okay. I was saying, because you mentioned public safety and how yeah. if, you, you, if it were up to you, some of that $99 million of relief would go to public safety. Uh, regardless of if we had the $99 million or not, public safety is still uh, a huge issue in our community. Right. Um, and one of the things that the council does is approve the budget uh, for public safety. So if elected, would you be open to increasing that budget? And if it looked as though that was not going to happen, how would you work to get that done? I, well, yes, I would increase it because what I would use it on 
is retention. Um, right now, even the police chief, we're paying we're paying startup employees or police officers so little that they come here, they get their training, they get their first year, and then they go somewhere else that pays five, ten dollars an hour more. Um, so what we need to do is make sure we're competitive um, and able to keep good police officers that work in, in the city, you know, work good with the community. And <clears throat> I would work with my constituents. I mean, we can sit down and we, you know, we'll sit there and talk it out. I mean, this is important. I think, I think everybody out there knows that this is an important issue if what's going on in Flint. And I, I think we can work it out. I think we can make it happen. Okay, and Flint is known for so many things, right? We're known for being the home, the birthplace of General Motors. We're known for being the home of the sit-down strike. We're known for revolutionizing the way that this country looks at unions, the way this country looks at housing. Um, but more recently, for the past seven years, seven years, Joe, we've been yeah. known for the water crisis. And that's seven years and counting. So I'm just trying to figure out, Joe, what are your general thoughts on that? You know, how do we address you know, the health, education, and infrastructure when it relates to uh, the Flint water crisis? Well, it's a trust issue, you know, and <clears throat> it's always hard to trust the same people that are in there every day, you know, same people from the beginning. Um, we've just got to be transparent. We got to be very transparent of what's been done, where it's been done. Look at look at what needs to be done. And I know everybody's lot of people saying, I kind of feel the same way. I live in Flint. I mean, I don't trust the water yet. My pipe has been replaced. Um, but we got to build confidence. We've got to, we've got to make sure we've got to make sure the water is safe and safe for everybody in the city. And we need to figure out how we're going to do it. If we haven't done it already, um, we need to look at finding new revenue streams to fix what the state won't fix if it needs to be fixed. And we need to figure out how to help people fix what's inside their homes too, because, you know, we can fix what's on the outside and say the water's good. But if you have, rusted out pipes on the inside and you don't have money to fix them, then that's not good. Um, so we got to stop putting band-aids on problems and start looking at the problem as a whole and fixing it as a whole. Um, until we start doing that, we're never going to gain people's trust back. And that's what we got to start doing. We got to make sure the whole problem's fixed and be very transparent very, very transparent of what we're doing, what's being done, what's been done, how it's been tested, how it's been filtered, how it's been monitored, and start gaining people's trust back. Okay, and Joe, I just want to um, thank you for your time. We are just about at the one minute mark left here. And so I wanna give you the opportunity because you are running for fifth ward council person against the incumbent. So I want to give you the opportunity to take about a minute here and tell us why the residents in the fifth ward should vote for you. Okay, well, I mean, I think they, I think the residents are ready for change and I hope they end the change that you want. Um, I do, I love the city. I want, I. I love how great and how energetic it is. I do have the knowledge and the back, the backbone to get things done. I'm used to working with small budgets and making them bigger with Flint Public Art Project. You know, I brought a million dollar program here for $350,000 over the last, you know. So I know how to make things work and I know how to make things happen. And I think we can, I think we can make Flint a lot better. Um, not that it's not, you know, not that it's terrible. I love the people in Flint. We just need some, get some work to it. So I want to make it better. I want to make it perfect. And I want to make the people that live here happy. They're living here. I don't want them to be afraid. I don't want them to be, um, worrying about whether they can drink their water or not. I want them to enjoy life. And I want everybody to have that same opportunity. And 
I think I think we can make I think I can make Flint better. Well, all right. Fifth Ward Council candidate Joe Scapani, thank you for joining us this evening. We surely appreciate your time. Thank you, Candace. You're more than welcome. And when we come back, more meet the candidates right after this. up your son's haircut? Do you try to fix it? Work with what you've got? Or show solidarity? Thank you, babe. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. 